loves the Seattle Seahawks, and I would ask him if he's related to Luke Wilson, but there's two L's in Luke Wilson's nat last name in the same way that there's two N's in this man's first. Rain Wilson here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Rain? Rich, I couldn't be better. Why is that? Uh, you know, it's life, baby. I feel great. I yeah. look amazing, okay, as you know. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I feel good. The Seahawks won. Mm -hmm. It was ugly, but you know we 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 crawled back up to five hundred. Yes, you did. You're four and four going into your bye week, and uh, what what concerns you most about your Seattle Seahawks? Oh God, <laughs> don't don't let me get started. Well, obviously these the offensive line issues. Um, I guess. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what exactly is wrong with them, but I just feel like the offensive play calling is not very good and execution as well. And there's just way too many holes in our defense. I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's all around. I mean, we're, we're playing like a 500 ball club right now. Yeah, the, the, the mistakes like uh, the interception that got tipped by Greg Hardy into his own hands, the... Uh, the issue that happened with the uh, punting, uh, the, the, the way there was a big re uh, locket return that got called back in the fourth quarter. It just seems it's just one thing after another. But they actually overcame it this time. If you think about it. They did. They managed to do it against, you know, right now, you know, sorry, the, the Cowboys without mm. Romo and Bryant just are the worst. Mm. Um, but uh, we've got a long way to go before we could, you know, potentially beat someone like Denver or New England. Or even Carolina and um, Green Bay. Yeah. I'm with Rain Wilson here on the Rich Eisen Show, uh, the man whose work you loved in the office, Six Feet Under, has written a book called The Bassoon King that you can pre-order on Amazon right now in bookstores on Tuesday, November 10th. We'll talk about that in a moment. But So you're, you're one of the anti uh, Daryl Bevel guys. You're one of those folks, uh, Seahawk fans, that think the offensive coordinator is ultimately the root of, of the issue for the team? I, I, I don't know. They just seem so tentative. I, 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 don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know enough about football. I'm a big fan, but I'm not like an expert like yourself. You've seen enough. Of, no, the, no. of the gridiron. I don't know exactly. What do, what do you think? Well, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, it just We, we had uh, Kurt Warner um, on Sunday's show yesterday showed uh, a, a play that they ran against the 49ers four straight times, which was essentially a four wide receiver set where two wide receivers went straight down the field on the, uh, on the inside and on the outside, two wide receivers ran a, a hitch and they ran the same play four straight times. It did work three out of four times against the 49ers, but it just makes you wonder, you know, wh where any imagination is and why it's not there. That's all. That's where I'm standing on. When we've seen the Seahawks make those great drives in years past, yes, we have. Been, it's almost like they've just taken the, the reins off and just let Russell Wilson go. And there's a, there's, you know, it's a hurry up offense. They're really pushing it down the field and making outrageous throws and catches and pounding it up the middle. And it just seems like relentless. Yeah. Uh, the way we drove against Denver, the way we drove against New England and Green Bay, and that seems to be missing. I don't understand it. Yeah. That, but you did see it at least in the fourth quarter yesterday to beat the Dallas Cowboys. Yes. It did look like the one final of drive. Games. Yes, exactly. Uh, so well, how's your fantasy team looking this year? What do you got? Well, they're pathetic because you told me to pick up Amir Abdullah. <laughs> well, look, now, hold on a minute. You did. You no, did. No, no, no. I blame it entirely on you. <laughs> Both teams have Amir Abdullah. Before the season, you said, give me the name of a rookie. You emailed me, correct? This is what you're referring to. Give me the name of a rookie for me to choose. Didn't you? Is that a yes? You guys hear, I hope your fan base hears that little bit of that, that little bit of resentful defensiveness in your voice. <laughs> oh, we heard it. <laughs> you, have you, this is the other side of Rich Eisen. This is the ugly side of Rich Eisen. <laughs> the underbelly? The soft the underbelly? Under, the dark underbelly. Because, yes. Rich, you could have easily just said, you're right. You know what, Rain? I, I'm, I, I didn't, made a bad call. I didn't know how bad. You know, in all honesty, I had no, no one had any idea the Detroit Lions were going to be this bad this year. I mean, mm. come on, with That's all that true. talent. All right. Should, you know, uh, and the coaching changes, I thought they were going to be great this year. Yeah. Okay, so let me try that. Let me see how this works. <clears throat> let me get, get in touch with my 
my my my overbelly, my my light overbelly. I'm sorry, okay. Rain. I didn't see this coming. Uh, I really thought Amir Abdullah would do very well. I didn't see that they would go ahead and, you know, swap out offensive coordinators for a guy named Jim Bob Cooter. Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> um, so I apologize. But I thought I thought that was your winning choice. I really did. I try to get him in every fantasy league that I'm in. And it's not yeah, working Yeah, it out. didn't work out so well. Both of my teams are three and five. Okay. They suck. And, uh, you it's know, I don't bad. know what to say. Um, um uh, that's not that bad. You still have enough time. No, it's not going to happen. Do you have a league that you want to win over the other one? Is there one that you you really want to win? Yeah, over? I, I, I'm uh, the, the the my main league is the office league. Okay. Um, and Rich, I got um, fifty five points this week from my office league. Oh my gosh. Which included Jeremy Hill, my first round draft choice, mm. Amir Abdullah. I started John Brown because I think I read something in the morning like, oh, John Brown is active. I'm like, oh, great. Mm. Started him, got zero points. Oh, no. Um, and, oh, Emmanuel Sanders got like two catches. Mm. <laughs> the Broncos had a giant blowout. Emmanuel Sanders had like 27 yards. Who else, is in, just, who else is in the office league with you? Who else is in there? Uh, what other actors? Yeah. Well, people that we might know. Yeah, I'm asking John you to name John Krasinski. Heard of him? I have. He's a big Giant Patriot movie honk. Star John Krasinski. Yeah, he loves the Patriots. He's a huge Pats fan. Mm -hmm. Brian Baumgartner. Ah. So he's Kevin. He's a huge Green Bay fan. He's good buddies with uh, with Aaron Rodgers. And my starting quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, highest scoring guy on my team, Kels, Travis Kels. <laughs> Guy oh, my team. my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So, who's winning? Is Krasinski winning the league? All right. You want me to check? Yeah. I'm going to check the win-loss. Yeah, give me the ultimate. Here's Rain Wilson. Mr. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't. I think Krasinski's doing really well this year. Okay. All these Patriots. Yeah, people. I think he's, uh, let me see. They're killing it. Yeah, he's he's four and three, but I think he's just won this other one. Okay. So, that would make him five and three. Not bad. Yeah, he's doing good. But we're all trailing good. Jeb Bush, who is seven and zero going into this week, as you heard uh, from from his uh, debate. He mentioned he was seven and zero. He had Ryan Tannehill. Oh. <laughs> he has Tannehill and Gronk, and was seven and zero, is what he said. Oh man, well, good mm. good for him. Good for him. Rayan Wilson is here on the Rich Eisen Show. I'm holding up a copy of your book, Bud, The Bassoon King. Um, and tell me what this is all about. This is all about the best book you'll ever read in your life, Rich. <laughs> That's what it's about. That's no, I wrote a book. I wrote a comedic memoir of my life, uh -huh. and it's got a lot of my ups and my downs in it and uh, a lot of hilarious stories, but okay. uh, also just a little bit of profundity sprinkled on top. Oh, I've got a couple chapters about The Office, lots of... Uh, Inside information makes a great stocking stuffer. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I've also noticed you were able to secure the forward from Dwight Schrute. How did you get in touch with him, Rain? Yeah, I had to go through uh, some secret channels at NBC Universal, but yes. uh, we were able to get to pay him three hundred dollars <laughs> to write the introduction for the book. And uh, I love the fact that Dwight Schrute hated the book. Oh, really? So yeah, that's yeah. That's ugly. You really did not like it. That's that's um, unfortunate. You, you you say that this book is about your 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 upbringing and uh, how it was like you were literally living inside a John Hughes movie, essentially. So which well which for John that period of my life? Yeah, when I started acting in high school, I was a really nerdy kid growing up. Mm -hmm. I was always a football fan. I was like the nerdiest football fan around. But uh, I was I played the bassoon, hence the title. Mm -hmm. I was on the chess team and the debate club and uh, marching band. I played the xylophone and um, how does what, how computer does what, club, pottery club. So, so marching with a xylophone, was there some sort of ever turbulence issues with you marching and having to, to raise the leg and, and then hit the xylophone at the same time? Was there an issue it with that? It straps around your middle like a, like a fanny pack, like a, like a belt. <laughs> but the sad thing is that we were the Shorecrest Highlanders, which is in Seattle, and um, mm -hmm. we wore kilts. So I was, and I was really skinny back then. Not so much anymore, unfortunately. But... Uh, so I was marching around skinny as a whippet with a xylophone strapped to my belly. So you were a kilt-wearing, xylophone-strapped individual is basically what you were. <laughs> exactly. 
playing on Wisconsin and other and you know tequila at, at um, yeah. football games. <laughs> so, uh, which John Hughes movie would best describe your upbringing then? Out of all well, of them, because then I went from that environment and I moved to Chicago where I started acting. So I tell a lot of stories about that those teenage years, mm-hmm. and um, so I kind of reinvented myself in the '80s. And I I have a chapter how Elvis Costello made me an actor because mm. I was got really into punk and new wave music. And so I kind of reinvented myself and I took an acting class. I just signed up for a drama class. And I, in drama class, once I, I danced around to mystery dance by Elvis Costello. And, um, then I made everyone laugh. And then the cute girls came up and said, Oh, you're so funny. We sit at our lunch table. <laughs> and after that, I knew I needed to be an actor for the rest of my That's- life. <laughs> You put the bassoon away at that point? Is that when you... I put the bassoon away. I, I quit the Model United Nations. I quit the chess team. All of the other, uh, the geeky, uh, the, the Dungeons and Dragons yes. uh, on the weekends went away for um, for doing drama rehearsals. Because the drama Fantastic. geek is the highest on the food chain <laughs> of high school nerds. Well, Rain, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled the way it's all turned out for you. Um, come, come in studio next time when you're out here in Los Angeles. I'd love to have you in here. Okay. I would love to do that. Thank you for spending the time. Thank you for alerting us to about this book to go get it. Thank you for giving me my new fantasy team name, Sprinkle of Profundity. That's my new spring. I, I oh, love nice. that. I love it because I need a. I need a. I'm three and five too. That's the problem when you come to me for advice and we're both wind up three and five. That's oh, a problem. Goodness. That's a problem. Oh, good. But you're gonna like my new team name in my other league. What is it? Encephalopic traumas. <laughs> is that fit? It works. Okay, very good. It's in. Okay, very good. Cephalopic traumas. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Ryan. I appreciate it. Thanks, Rich. You bet. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Same here. The Bassoon King, My Life in Art, Faith, and Idiocy. With a forward by Dwight Schrute. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience. <laughs> 